it. For the first keynote in this segment, we have Mr. Suraj Balachandran, Business Unit Head, Sectrio. Suraj, the stage is all yours. Take it away. Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, I know that coffee was very interesting. I was uh, encouraged to stay back a bit, but I thought I'll finish this and grow, grab a beer probably at the end of it. Uh, thank you for coming in, and uh, it's my pleasure to be here uh, at uh, the DSCI session. The last time when we were here, uh, the world was a different place, right? Um, we didn't have the pandemic. Uh, we didn't know how to operate in a, a system where people were, you know, succumbing to it left, right, and center. Thankfully, that's behind us. Hopefully, I don't know, I see news that it's coming back, at least in China. Hopefully, it'll not touch India. But uh, what is happening in the background was also the fact that um, the men with the black hoods behind the laptops were clicking away. If you know what has happened over the last few years, there has been a substantial increase in the number of cyber attacks. Today, it's no more news when you see news like this. It's expected, right? It's happening every now and then. A uh, couple of weeks back, we had the uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. A uh, few months back, we had the Mumbai attack, Mumbai grid, power, power grid being attacked, going down. We had the Oil India attack, again, a few months back. It's no more surprising. Sectrio runs one of the largest honeypot networks in the world. And uh, we track threats that's happening globally. Here are some of them that we see, but what's startling is that uh, we see a substantial jump in the OT and IOT attacks. Something going up to about 330% of last time, the OT ones, the IOT going up to 270%. And all that in the last 10 months. We have a few couple of months to go, I mean, one more month to go for the year, but we see this hitting at least about 300, 400% in the last one year alone. Now that is scary, right? Now, I'm sure many of you know, before the first boots, the Russian boots moved, into Ukraine, Russia brought down their telecom network. Soon after, they brought down their power grids. So they didn't have a communication network, they didn't have power. Essentially defenseless, right? It's a scary situation. Subex runs again, as I said, Sector runs one of the largest honeypot networks in the world, and uh, we are spread in about 75 countries. We have roughly about 7,000, 8,000 physical and virtual devices uh, soliciting attacks. We get attacked 18 million times a day. And some of the attack patterns that we see are really scary, right? Our critical infra is under attack. Our health infra is under attack. Our enterprises are under attack. Now, this could be our adversaries across the board, across the borders. It could even be actors, state-sponsored actors. It could even be amateurs trying to make a quick buck. Irrespective, we are in a cyber war. It's not the conventional IT war that we are talking about. It is a OT war, operation technology, and that spreads across these industries, and many of them have a direct impact on our lives, be it the power, the, the petroleum, the manufacturing, the, the process industries, the food manufacturing industries. I was recently at one of the uh, tire manufacturing companies who makes tires for the Indian defense. Their tires are the ones that roll the trucks. They're worried that their infra is under attack and the compound that goes in is being altered. That could mean that when the troop movement happens, when the truck movement happens, you could have a faulty vehicle who can't, which can't take the ammunition to the, the, the borders or where it's supposed to be, right? Now, that's the situation that we are in. There is a difference when it comes to IT 
as well as OT infrastructure. I think we all know it's matured. We have many, many players. We know how to play it. We know how to defend ourselves. There are break-ins occasionally. There are ransom demands. There is reputational damage. There is confidentiality data loss. There is integrity loss. But OT is a different ball game. CIA is what IT is. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. OT is just the opposite. Imagine a petroleum refinery going down, even for a day. The loss runs into billions. There will be a backlog of petroleum stock affecting everybody's life. Imagine the power grid going down. You know, you have backups. But how long? When the Mumbai attack happened, pretty much the entire office infra went down because nobody had more than six, seven, eight hours of power backup. So availability is the first thing. Then comes the integrity, and then the confidentiality, right? The impact is that OT can affect human life, yours and mine our families. That is where OT becomes the most important and that's where the next war is going to happen. Right? That's what we are trying to protect ourselves from. And OT is complex, let's admit it. Right? There are big players, the OEMs, the Honeywells, the Rockwells of the world. And there are many security solution providers as well. As I said earlier, the OT infra pretty much runs 24-7. Have you ever heard of a, a, a power grid going down intentionally for anything more than a few minutes? Intentionally. Unintentionally something would happen, go down for a couple of hours or so, but intentionally it doesn't go down. A petroleum plant doesn't go down unless it's a planned one for more than an hour or two. Now, they all run at an SLA of 99.59. And that's a responsibility of the OEMs, right? They put in the solution, integrate, test, and, and of course, uh, commit a 99.59 uptime. If there is a third party who has to come in and integrate with that, when OEMs take their hands, well, lift their hands and say, hey, you know what? My 99.59s don't work anymore. I can't guarantee this SLA anymore. That becomes a business problem. Most times, when a business problem comes to the table, as somebody was mentioning yesterday in the session, the board takes a business call, which explains why many of the CISOs in the board, they raise a warning, but they can't define what the business does. Because that's not their call, it's a business call. So how do we address this, right? Our belief is that the ecosystem has to come together. What is the ecosystem? We have the OEMs, we have the solution providers, we have the academia, we have the government. This needs to come together so that there is a ecosystem which looks at protecting the critical infra, protecting citizen lives. Now, if you look at the IT, by virtue of the maturity, pretty much everybody has open architecture, APIs, integrate. Nobody asks a question on who is your security solutions provider, because they know it works. It's designed that way. Whereas in the OT, that isn't the case. Pretty much OEM decides who comes in, who doesn't. And many a times, a pre-integration is not the norm. It's an aberration. And therein lies the problem. This is where I think OEMs and us, the solution providers, can make a difference. How? Perhaps we should have an open architecture which allows third parties, solution providers, to come and integrate, test, create labs, where the customers can come and see and be confident 
that if I work with this OEM and the solution provider, my 99.59s remains 99.59. I'm sure, you know, all the names that you see in that list and the names outside, the OT players would be more than happy to support that. The question is, will the OEMs be ready to support that? I don't think there is any other way but to get to that point sooner or later, sooner the better, because as I said at the beginning, critical infra is under attack. Almost all enterprises today is under attack. And if you look at what happened in Mumbai, and I was talking to some of these, uh, you know, officials who, are, who investigated that, and Subex our, ourselves runs a, a threat research. What we figured out is that the adversaries came into the grid eight months before they actually brought the grid down, right? So, I wouldn't be surprised if many of them have already been infiltrated and it's a disaster waiting to happen. Today, airports, seaports, grids, as I said, um, power generation, power transmission, water treatment plants, you name it. I wouldn't be surprised they are already infiltrated or somebody is already targeting them, right? I see no way out unless some of these stakeholders come together. Government has a big play in this. And I see us, at least in India, moving forward in the right, right direction. There is a preference for Make in India solutions by virtue of the fact that many of the established players have been found to have back doors, which is, of course, worrisome. So Make in India is definitely an ask from the government. And of course, we are gearing up, to, we are already geared up to that. I also know for a fact that, I mean, I, I, it's a hearsay, but I do know that um, there is an initiative by the government to figure out how to bring in this collaboration because they're not looking at a, a single player to define terms of engagement, right? In summary, we have to bring in the academia together. There has to be a collaboration. There has to be joint innovation. And there has to be a trust, of a mutual trust, so to speak. And this is nothing new. We have seen that. So look at the India stack. It's an open architecture. It's not one solution. It's not one vendor. But a, a bunch of vendors who have come in together and created something which is today the fundamental of financial inclusion, digital inclusion across the country. That is what is touted today as one of the biggest innovations in the last few years and something which some of the countries abroad are looking at adopting. Now, if you can do that there, the question is why not here? I'm sure the brilliant minds amongst you We'll think through this. This is the problem. I just want to put it on the table and see if we can come together and solve it. We are up for it. I hope we will together solve this. Thank you.